you please welcome Francis Menotti. I'm not usually one to gasconade, a 13-point word for brag. <laughs> but I'm a pretty mean Scrabble player. No. Just came back from England, and I found their Scrabble sets are a little different. They have a green tile rack. And the tiles themselves are also plastic, which makes it impossible for certain family members and friends to use the wood grains to cheat. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, in Scrabble, you have 100 letter tiles. And you take seven of them, you rearrange them to make the best word possible, right? Uh, we're going to play a little game. I need seven of you. We're going to take the first row and the third row. That's two, that's five. Uh, would you just join me on stage? A warm round of applause will follow you up here. Come on up here, thanks. Please stand right here, please. Right along this line, if you will, please. Thank you very much. There you go, right along the line here. Uh, we're going to play a game. And each of you are going to reach inside the bag, take a single tile, keep it to yourself, don't show anyone else, and in a minute I'm going to have you deposit them on this tray as you walk back to your seat. Fair enough? Yeah. I feel as though to get into the spirit of this game I should change my words slightly, so uh, I entreat that you take this uh, satchel of graphemes <laughs> and, uh, and shake it paroxysmally. <laughs> Bravo! That's good. <laughs> now, uh, now uh, delve into the satchel and extract a singular grapheme for your own ocular pleasure, not other. <laughs> and uh, please reciprocate with the satchel down the line till seven of you have done thusly. <laughs> Excellent. And Jonathan, would you be so kind as to join me over sure, here? Sure. Please, thank you very much, Jonathan. I want to right over here, please. Pleasure. Nice to meet you. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, Jonathan, uh, as I riffle through the folia, by acclamation of cessation, bid me cease at whichever temporal singularity you like. So you're gonna flip and I'm gonna stop. Gotcha. <laughs> stop. Perfect. Uh, now take the um, ligneous accreted graphite stylus <laughs> uh, and inscribe a small circle approximately the dimensions of a pecuniary pittance representing the value of a decimated dollar arbitrarily in C2. But just draw a small circle without looking yet. <laughs> this is much harder work than I thought it was going to be. Okay. Uh, without looking, a small a circle small from circle. underneath. Okay. Very good. Okay. Excellent. Good. I'll take this. And uh, in fact, you know what? Would you also initial the page just to make sure in case we lose it right here at the corner, if you will, please? That way you'll find it later. Fair right. enough. Okay. I mark the page here. I'll come back to you, if you will. Good. Shall I hold this? Please. Naturally. <laughs> naturally, as this pride to radio may be already perspicacious to you, very good. And back to your seat, please. While words may be diverting and pulchritudinous, they can, if overused, cognitively perturb, but also be a pleonastic and intellectual fardel to the auditor. <laughs> I said fardel. <laughs> <laughs> Hyperbrobding, nagging words make the elocutionist seem pompous and egotistical. They can alienate the audience or bewilder the listener to an aphasic stupor, as is evidenced by our current endeavors. <laughs> Uh, while it may be a salutary exercise to be well-versed in the vocabulary of one's language, I think our speech ought to concatenate around linear Lilliputian utterances when uh, casually conversing with others, no? Small words. Uh, <laughs> oh, hmm. Uh, which of you had the L? If I may? Ah, oh, you're first in line. <laughs> uh, Jonathan, would you be so kind as to open the book to the chosen lexical sign? Okay. And find the encircled word. It's my fervent hope that through the sesquipedalian demonstration of a frivolous con, I've successfully rendered my intention that whenever possible, one should eschew obfuscation. <laughs> what was it? The word is lobster. Word. Uh, okay, I think they've talked long enough, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to go to... Let's go to Penn and ask what he thinks. This and and, 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 and the, the, the big tray, yeah. Oh, and the big tray. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you're on the table as well. Are you here, man? You're oh, thing, thing, yeah. Should I tell you what you may and may not examine? Yes. <laughs> um, I, I would prefer you to take a look at that. Yeah. And uh, this, this dictionary is fine to take a look at as well. But uh, and anything I've got in my pockets is yours. <laughs> What do you, uh, 
Can you give us maybe a hint as to what you might be looking for without giving away too much? Well, if what we're looking for we can't find, we're not giving away uh, much there, are we? Because we can't find it. I, may I say, I was really hoping you were going to go for this tray. Yeah. Well, we'd like to answer you with a trick of our own. Please. Because uh, earlier today, Jonathan, um, Andrew came to you? Yes. Someone came to you? Yes. And they asked you to put an envelope in your pocket. Which I did. I did not touch that envelope since you put it in your pocket? No. You have no idea what's in that envelope? I do not. I didn't even steam it open. I didn't even hold it up to a light. No. And that envelope's been in your possession since you had it? It's right here. Would you reach in to pull out that envelope, Yes, please? I will. Now, we could not have gotten to that, right? We did not see this trick. And yet, before we even saw you, that envelope that says fool us on it was delivered to Jonathan Ross. And we're not going to touch it. We're not going to touch it. Would you hand it, please, to Francis? And Francis, would you open that envelope? Because I think this trick is going to blow your mind. In this envelope, you, no one else has touched this. We did not see the trick before this. Would you pull out and would you read aloud, please, what it says? He will fool Penn and Teller. Wow. <laughs> to do the honor and present you that. How about that, ladies and gentlemen? Nice Mr. Francis Minotti, ladies and gentlemen. Great job.